Hello, everyone, and welcome back again to The Joy of Editing with yours truly, Dave Kelly. On today's episode, Luminar 4, we're looking at looks and layers. And it's going to be a really good one. I think you're going to learn a lot, so stay tuned and let's get started. Now, here's, here's the uh, starting image right here. I added a, uh, pre, a preset look here and made a few adjustments in that preset. And then I added a sky replacement. And then I added another preset. It's just a minor adjustment here. And then I wanted to darken the sky here just to close this image off a little bit here. So I darkened the sky. And then I wanted to darken the foreground a little bit to draw you into this uh, windmill here. And then the last thing I wanted to do was just close off the, uh, the bottom of the image here just to keep you in the frame. And that was the last thing I've done. Actually, next to the last thing I've done, then I added a vignette just to draw attention to the actual windmill itself here. And I love the vignette tool inside of Luminar. So let's go ahead. I'll reset this and we'll get started. Okay, the first thing I did was came up and opened up the looks panel here. And I went to my Luminar looks and I have a bunch of different uh, look presets in here. I'm so used to calling them presets. So forgive me if I call them presets. And I went to the landscape uh, looks right here. And I chose warm sunset, which is the last one here in the right. So I just click that. And I like that pretty much right out of the gate. So I'm going to go ahead and shut off looks here so we get that off the bottom of the screen because it just bothers me when it's down there. And then I just came and uh, we're in light right now. And you can see the ones that are highlighted. That's the ones that are being used in this uh, particular uh, look. So let's click on light. And as you can see, the highlights are pulled back and that looks fine. Let's go to AI Enhance. There's a little bit of uh, AI accent here. And we can readjust these things if we want to. And I recommend that when you do a look, you don't have to accept that look just the way it is. You can add to it. You can subtract from it. Uh, you can make adjustments in all the different uh, filters that, that they're using in the look. But I think that looks pretty good. And there's a little bit of AI sky enhance on here as well. Don't really need to worry about that because I'm replacing the sky. But I'm just going to leave it the way it is. It's not hurting anything. And let's go down to landscape enhancer. And there's a bit of golden hour on here. Now, if I wanted a little bit more, I could just increase that a little bit, and I think I might, just a little bit there. Now let's go into the creative section and see what's in here. Uh, color styles LUT. There's a LUT being used here. Now we can increase the amount of that LUT or decrease it. And I think I like it maybe right around there. And we can adjust the contrast here if we want to. We can give it more contrast. I might just take a little bit of that contrast out. And of course we can adjust the saturation. But I think right around there looks pretty good. And let's go into the Pro here. And they used an adjustable gradient. And I believe what I did here was, uh, let's just toggle this and see what it's doing. Okay, it's darkening the sky a little bit. I'm going to be replacing the sky. I think for now, I'm just going to shut this one off. So I'm just going to click on the reset here. And that's the first step. Step two, click on layers. Click the plus sign. Create new stamped layer. That way it'll just take all those adjustments and bake that into the image. Next, we're going to do a sky replacement. So come down to the creative palette. Give it a click. And we're going to come up to sky replacement. And let's go sky selection. And I believe I used sunset clouds. Yeah, I believe I used sunset clouds. And... As you can see, the light appears to be coming from the right. And this light here appears to be coming from the left. So what I want to do is flip that sky. So I get the light going in the right direction. And I thought these clouds looked pretty good with this image. And uh, so that's the sky replacement. I didn't do too much else to it. Uh, I might, uh, let's see here, like relight the scene, see if we want to relight the scene any. It's not doing a whole lot. I might just adjust that up a little bit here. There's no gaps or anything in the sky. I think the sky replacement looks really awesome. Let's check the temperature here. Do I want to warm it up? Yeah, I think I warmed it up a little bit. Because it's a nice, inviting, warm scene. And I think a little bit of warmth in that sky would look nice. All right. And sky exposure, I think, looks pretty good. 
And so then I went ahead and I added a new adjustment layer next. So come up here to the plus key, add new adjustment layer. In today's tutorial, we're doing a bit of an advanced uh, workflow here. So we're working with looks and layers, and I thought it would be interesting for you to see how I work with these different uh, techniques. So the next thing I want to do is add another look. So let's come up here to looks. And, and right now we're on Luminar Looks Landscape, so click here on the drop down, and we're going to come down. I'm going to use one of my older presets that I have from Dixie Dixon preset pack right here. So I'm just going to click on this. See, they used to call them uh, presets and not looks. And the one I chose here was this one called Dripping, Dripping in Gold. And so give that a click. Now you have this amount slider here, so you can take this and pull this back, adjust the amount of that uh, particular preset. In my case, I liked it the whole way up, so because it's not doing a whole lot, but it's just warming up the image a little bit, and that's that looks really good. So I'm going to click on looks just to get rid of the looks down here. It kind of distracts me. And then, um, oh, and by the way, you can also take this opacity slider, and you can pull this back as well. And so you can readjust the actual layer itself. So let's come and see what she is using in this preset pack. So whatever's highlighted, again, is what, is being used in this particular look. So let's click on light and we can see that color is being used. Now if we click on color, we can see that the uh, saturation is saturation has been brought back to a minus 10 and I think that looks good. Nothing else has been changed here. I could alter other things here, but I like it just the way it is, so I'm just going to leave that. And now let's look what else they're using and that's in the uh, professional section and some split toning. So we can see here in split toning, on the highlight split toning, we're using this cream color. This is a reddish color. It's probably hard to see here. If I turn, this is in the shadows. If I pull up the saturation, you can see it right there. I'm going to take this and take it the whole way off because I don't want to get any extra reds in the image here. All right, but I like this creamy tone here. Now, if we wanted more of it, we could take this saturation slider and move it further to the right, and I think I like that. And you can alter the hue of that particular color right here by adjusting this hue slider here. But I think that looks good. And then the next thing I want to do is add another adjustment layer. So just click on Add New Adjustment Layer. The reason I added this adjustment layer is because I want to darken the sky up a little bit just to draw interest into this windmill. And then I'm going to add another adjustment layer and darken up this foreground a little bit. And I'm going to add one more just to darken up the very bottom, just to close it off at the bottom, just to keep you in the image. So we're doing a lot of adjustment layers here, but it's all about you getting proficient at adjustment layers. And I use them all the time. And, it, and to make this Luminar workflow work well, you just really need to work with these layers and understand how they work. And so hopefully this tutorial will help you to get advanced in doing that. All right, so stay with me here. All right, so now we're going to come up here, and this is going to be very simple. We're going to go to Essentials. We're going to go to Light, and we're just going to take the exposure, and we're going to pull it back a little bit here. Okay, and don't worry if it's too dark. We can readjust it later. I'm not worried about the whole image, just the top portion in the sky here. We're going to use a layer mask, so just click on Ed Edit Layer Mask and uh, get, a, get a gradient mask. And it says click and drag to draw gradient. So I'm just going to click and drag keep it straight just pull it on down a little bit just to darken the top of the image a little bit then you can come here and you can pull it up and down you can adjust it if you didn't get it straight enough you can adjust where it graduates here between here and here is where it feathers it gets the uh, full strength above this line here so if you wanted it to feather out more you could do it like this and so just play with it and get it to look just the way you like it and I think I'm thinking maybe right around there looks pretty good. Now we can come over to Exposure and revisit this and take a look and see if we got it too dark. And I want to don't want to go too crazy there, but you know maybe right around in there looks good. And that's it. And now all we have to do is come up to Layer again and add another new adjustment layer. And this time we're going to darken the bottom. And to do that, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to come back to Essentials, go to um, Light. It's already open for us. Let's just pull back on the exposure a little bit. And let's uh, come to Edit Mask, Gradient Mask, and click and drag, and draw one up through here. And maybe take it up to about here. 
Now let's just go ahead and, and just move this around and see if we get it to the right position. And I'm thinking maybe right around there. Now let's revisit the exposure here. And just want to darken it up a little bit there. I don't like this light through here, so I might just pull this up. Yeah, I want a nice smooth transition through here. And I think it needs straightened a bit. So I'm just going to straighten it up a little bit. Let me see if I need to pull it up a little bit more. I think right, I think, yeah, maybe right around there. Let's check the exposure. Let's make sure we get it right. Sometimes there's a bit of delay in these sliders here. But I think right there looks good. Now, we're going to come and add one more adjustment layer. Told you there's a lot of adjustment layers here. So we'll click the plus here. But we need them all. So add new adjustment layer. Come back to the essentials. We're back on light again. And we're just going to take the exposure, pull it down a little bit. We're going to do one more uh, gradient mask. But this is going to be a small one down at the bottom. Or I should say it's not going to be very wide. I just want to use it to close off the bottom of this image here and maybe somewhere right around there and then I can move this around a little bit and watch I'll just darken this again it there's a little bit of delay there oh well we can't have everything can we I want this software to work perfectly hopefully they'll get this some of these little bugs or issues ironed out and see how that just closes off the bottom of the frame. So it keeps us in the image. I want our attention going to the windmill. There's only one more step, and that's to add a vignette. And I love the vignette filter in Luminar 4. It's got an inner light feature to it, which is really awesome. I've got some great news for you. We don't have to add a new adjustment layer. So that's cool. So all we need to do now is come to vignette. And inside a vignette, we can adjust the amount and size, and we have advanced settings. Let's open up the advanced settings, because we're going to work with all this stuff. First off, let's go to Choose Subject. I like this feature. Click on the windmill itself, because that's the star of the show. And I'm going to show you a trick here. Take the feather and move it the whole way to the left, and then come to the amount and pull it to the left a good bit. So now we can actually see the shape of the vignette. And now we can come and adjust the roundness, make it more round or make it square, whatever we want. Let's make it kind of a uh, little more like an oval shape like this. Let's adjust the size of it. Let's make it a little bit s smaller around the um, actual windmill itself just to highlight it. And now let's take our feathering and let's take it. I'm going to say that let's take it the whole way to the right because we don't want to have any residue here. I don't want to look like we're looking through the porthole of a ship. We don't want that. So we have way too much vignetting on here. So let's just pull this back. We just want it to be subtle. We almost don't even want to see that it's there. But we just want to draw some attention into the windmill. So just a little bit. Maybe something like that. Now the feature I really enjoy is the inner light. So let's just take that and bump it up a little bit to the right. And see how it lightens up the center there around the windmill, which is really cool. So I'm thinking somewhere right around there. I thought I'd throw in an added bonus. See right down here that little line? I don't like that right there. Let's get rid of that. So let's come up here to these, to these canvas tools right here and click on Erase. And it's preparing. i got to wait till it's done preparing. I always want to be fast. Okay, and we have a brush right here, and we can adjust the size of the brush and all the different things here. We can add, subtract to, to the area we're erasing, but right now we're just going to brush right over this right here. And after we do that, we can come here and click on Erase and see what it does. Like magic, it's fixed. Click Done. The Erase tool is nice inside of Luminar 4. We'll do a video just on erasing things, but there it is. So, let's see how far we've come. Let's click on the eyeball here So and hold it down. Left-click it with your mouse. There's before and there's after. Pretty cool, right? All inside of Luminar 4. Now, I did start out in Photoshop and moved to Luminar 4, but like I said, you can use it right as a standalone uh, product. So, whichever way you want to go, it's up to you. After I was done with this image, I was, you know, and I was making my thumbnail, I, I saw that I missed a little section here of this image this uh in the uh, sky replacement it missed these ropes that were coming down through here so to fix this what i'm going to do is get a brush 
B for the brush tool. This is in Photoshop. I'm going to make my brush a little bit smaller. Sample this color by holding the Option key down right here. Click this once and come down to here. Hold the Shift key and click. And that will fix that one. Now let's come back up to this guy right here. My brush is real small, so I'm holding the Option key down to see the eyedropper just to see where I'm going to place my point. So it's going to be right here. I'm going to click it once. Hold the Option key down to get the little eyedropper tool. Come right to here. Right about here. Hold the Shift key down and click and fix that. You know, just because just because I care, you know, so, so I thought I would throw that in just to show you how we'd fix a little problem like that. I hope you enjoyed this one today and I hope you learned a lot. Please leave comments and questions in the comment section below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. I answer all my comments and questions. So I really appreciate each and every one of you guys that view and gals that view my tutorials. I really appreciate you. If you like this video today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And also, if you're not subscribed yet, please subscribe and click that bell notification icon. This way, every time I upload a new video, you will be notified about it. Well, thank you very much for joining me today on The Joy of Editing with me, Dave Kelly. And I'll see each and every one of you next time. But until then, happy editing.